A very good evening and welcome to Irish Whiskey Review. It's a very special tonight because uh, tonight, shortly in about 15-20 uh, minutes time, we'll be hearing from Deirdre O'Carroll, a blender at Irish Distillers. My, uh, if you want to watch the show, the best place to watch it is on Facebook. Uh, that's Irish Whiskey Review. Or uh, you can watch it also, brilliant place, uh, youtube.com uh, slash Irish Whiskey Review. Now, we also have a LinkedIn page now for the uh, show, Irish Whiskey Review, it's called also. So if you're on LinkedIn, do search for me or Marty or Irish Whiskey Review and uh, add us there. And we'll be glad to connect with you on there as well. You can also uh, buy us a coffee, support us. Uh, lots of people have done that. Uh, thanks very much for that this week, Barry. And that is buy me a coffee slash Irish Whiskey. You don't need the review. It's as simple as that. That's how you get in touch with us. Uh, you can also check out uh, Marty's website, ulsterwhiskey.com. Now, uh, I've got a lot of people to say hello to tonight. Uh, let's start off with uh, Mark Kerr, who's always first off the mark. This is like being on the radio on Monday afternoon. There's always a girl called Kerry gets in touch first. Mark Kerr's first off. Evening to you, Mark. Where have you been? It looks like you've been out and about when I watch, see you on Facebook. Uh, Shane Foley is saying hello as well. Evening all to you. If you want to share anything with us tonight, remember, comment, like, and share, and we can bring it on screen for you as well. Like we have a new name. I haven't seen this name tonight. It's Johan Strand. Uh, yeah, John Beach, I think that translates that. Uh, good evening to you, uh, Johan. Uh, thanks for joining us here on Irish Whisker Review. We are, of course, live every Saturday night at 10 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube. It gets retransmitted on Instagram and on LinkedIn Live as well. It also is going to go out on Twitch uh, on Sat Sunday afternoon around 12 noon. That's going to go out. Uh, if I remember to get up uh, before I have my lunch, it'll go out. It looks like it's going to be a bad day this weekend, so I won't be going to walk. Uh, so there are the places you can catch us. You can also catch us every Wednesday if you ask a smart speaker to play the Irish Whiskey Review podcast. Uh, you'll get the latest episode on there as well. And it, you can get that wherever you get your podcast from. You can pick that up as well. Now, it's probably a wintry and cold Fermanagh, but Trevor Watson is there tonight. Uh, Trevor Watson is down in Fermanagh. And, well... Are you staying in your caravan? I heard some of the caravans got raided down in Fermanagh. If you were staying in one, you shouldn't have been staying in. You got into bother. Uh, Julie Mason tonight uh, coming in loud and clear from Texas. Evening all. Looking forward to tonight's show. Yeah, that's not Julie with a 10-gallon hat on, by the way. That's J-R-U-A. No, it's not really. Now, let me see who else is uh, tuning in tonight. If you're tuning in for the first time tonight, always let us know. Uh, there's Nick Ryan saying hello. Uh, looking forward to listening in. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, another guy, great guy, big coffee expert. Uh, William McLennan join us. Uh, hello to you. And uh, Seamus Tobin as well is saying hello. Uh, remember to comment, like, and share. Tell your friends. If they don't do Facebook, they can do YouTube. They can do Instagram. They can do LinkedIn. It's Irish Whiskey Review. Very easy to find. And remember, you can support us on buymeacoffee.com, Irish Whiskey. And annual members who pay £40, well, they can actually join us on our trip out somewhere. Uh, James and Moira Docker Doherty saying hello, and uh, we have Marty. Good evening, Marty. Good evening, Justin. <laughs> uh, folks, just to explain why I'm a wee bit late, uh, I got a bit piece of technology on Justin's recommendation, and just before I decided to go on there tonight, it decided to do updates. Now, this is why Justin does the technology and I do the booze, because this kind of thing does my hair in. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I love it. I know Listen, you do. I was talking continuously for five minutes there. It hasn't been my world record. I once did two hours nonstop. 
But anyway, Justin, um, I've been with you for more than two hours. For you've not talked, you've not stopped talking for two hours. But I know I'm not impressed by two hours. It doesn't count if you're semi working. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't count if you're semi working. Jordy Burke saying hello. Haven't heard from you in a couple of weeks in Canada. Is it still there? How's the wall going? Uh, Shane Rayleigh is there. Evening from Dublin. There you go. Uh, we can't talk about Black Pig Steak because we'd get cut off on <laughs> Facebook. He'll think it's made up. Uh, Mark Bingham is saying hello. Good evening. Uh, yeah, hey guys. Uh, uh, Mark Kerr's telling us where he's been. Oh. He's saying, I've been to Dublin twice in court once this week. All the noble causes helped my daughter make a grand through IVF. Make me a grand. I think that's supposed to be make me a grand. Gosh, I misread that. I thought that was stand for the Irish Volunteer Force. I thought it's that was she was trying to it's sell it, a baby or something. It's endrovitus fertilization. Sorry about that. Gosh, almighty. There you go. You, you never know on this show. Uh, Mark Diamond is good to see you again. Can you hear us, Mark? Has your computer blown up tonight? Let me see. Um, who else is on? Dave Cummings is on. Uh, just in off the farm, looking forward oh. to this evening. Yes, <clears> won't be guy. disappointed. Uh, Dingle Dave. Dingle uh, Dave. We're on the we're on the Belfast Black tonight. Very, so we are. Very no nice. Guinness tonight. We're on the Belfast Black. Very nice. There's an awful lot of people still to say hello to before we do the news. Seamus Tobin is saying hello. Uh, James Moore is saying hello to Seamus. Seamus is saying hello to James. Could you just get WhatsApp, please? Uh, Mark, <laughs> Mark Diamond is saying, don't mention technology. Uh, Mark Kerr's laughing. Major oops. Yes, yes. Uh, and Nick Ryan's asking how the Cavs are doing. I'll, I, I'll tell you. Moo, 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 moo. They're doing fine. All right. Uh, and, then, and then Brent Norello, he's in Dicey's in Donegal. There you go. Uh, excellent. Now, we're not... We have a good week this week. This is this is a good week. I was very pleased that we got catching up with Deirdre earlier on in the week for for the the, the interview. And uh, you'll all like this. You'll appreciate this. It's a really nice, really good interview. But will we do the news, Justin? I think I think I think we better do the news. Yes. We'll right. Do the news because she talks for over half an hour tonight. So uh, <laughs> I love the way you say she talks. I think it was a sort of conversation, Justin. It wasn't. Just... <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Wasn't you in one of your rants? Well, if, if I say the running time is over half an hour, you would go, no. "Who's running?" All right. Uh, I'm going to pour myself a whiskey before this because my nerves is in shreds. My nerves is in shreds, and this is your fault. I'm blaming you for this. So listen, I get my updates done at one a.m. at night when uh, I sleep. I don't set them to do it at ten o'clock on a Saturday. I'm going to I'm going to have a Middleton very rare tonight because nobody opens these anymore. So I'm going to have something. Listen, I'm going to have about it, forty quid's worth of whiskey here. Is this to celebrate International Whiskey Day? Is it? No, Justin, you've preempted me on the news because today now it's oh, not yeah. it's not World Whiskey Day. No, no, that's that's. That's the Judean people's front. This is the people's front of Judea. This is okay. International Whiskey Day. And it's to celebrate and honour Michael Jackson. I love him. Look at him no. here, enjoying a whiskey here. This is brilliant. No, that's, that's actually him enjoying a vodka, Justin, because if you, if you looked at it, it's, that, that looks Hold like a... Hold on to make it bigger. Hold on to make it bigger. <laughs> that's, Michael Jackson with a, a litre bottle of Smirnoff. Um, I'm not uh, 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 two young ladies with him. That looks like a night out. Now, I'm not 100 percent sure what's going on there. Right. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Uh, no, not that Michael Jackson. The other Michael Jackson. The author. Oh my mistake. This guy. This guy who he he has wrote a number of he wrote a number of books and unfortunately passed away. Uh, he used to write for the Independent, the Observer, uh, and he was really there at the start of the whole craft beer movement and stuff. So. He, he he sort of saw all that coming, and he wrote books on on beer. Then he moved over into malt whiskey, um, and the malt whiskey companion is, I, I think, still the best selling book on on, on whiskey. Uh, some of the books are the World Guide to Whiskey. This one, um, World Guide to Beer, Whiskey, Scotland and its whiskies, and. Um, and so on and so forth. Now, if you ever get a chance, it's, I mean, his books are really, uh, really quite good. Now, this is a little bit dated, but it goes... How expensive is that book? It looks quite a substantial coffee steel, table style book. Uh, yeah. I can't remember what I paid for it, but you, you pick them up. They're not that expensive, really, but they're really, 
quite detailed and really well laid out, you know. Um, goes through it, this, you know, the, the pedigree of Irish whiskey and this kind of thing. So, okay, it's a little bit dated because this was written back when, before the Irish whiskey renaissance. So, but these are really well worth having if you're interested in whiskey because, because they're on at that era, you know, there's a lot of the history and, and stuff that gets changed and romanticized a little bit, really for PR and company purposes. And these are good reference to find out actually what, what really was going on or what had happened at that point. You know? Okay, right, I'm with you. Uh, certainly uh, yeah. a, a, a good day to be doing the show and have Beardry O'Carroll on, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, now, one thing, that, I don't know, I, maybe this is my, a sort of sick sense of humour of mine, but... Fortunately, he passed away in 2007, Michael Jackson. And now it says, I've read that he had a heart attack, but he also had Parkinson's disease. <laughs> and he didn't tell anybody about the Parkinson's disease until people thought he was drunk all the time. <laughs> you know, he's doing these whiskey reviews and doing these whiskey tastings, and people thought he was just, you know, pissed the whole time. But he actually had Parkinson's. So um, they any sort of felt the need to tell people, you know? Yeah, it's uh, people. People are are funny about their uh, uh, privacy and their ill health, and you yeah. never know what's going on in somebody's uh, no. life. Yeah. But I think just the job he was in, I think people thought he had one too many before he, he was doing the stuff, you know. So he, he sort of felt he had to. But no, International Whiskey Day, not World Whiskey Day. Okay. Copyright, copyright stuff, just you know. Okay. Anyway, oh, all right. Yes. <laughs> now, so story number two. If anyone, we did a bit on whiskey education, and now the Edinburgh Whiskey Academy, and I've just spotted our good friend Vic uh, is there. The Edinburgh Whiskey Academy is now offering a course on Irish whiskey. So for £99, you can do a self-paced course of eight modules, um, which include history, pot style production, sensory analysis, that's a few of them. And the course was written by Finan O'Connor, uh, who's currently doing a PhD in historic uh, mash bills, along with Bowen Distillery, uh, and Matt Healy, who's a, who's a whiskey reviewer. So if you're interested, go to www.edinburghwhiskeyacademy.com for more details. And uh, you have a wee video, Justin. We do indeed. The certificate in Irish whiskey is much like us Irish. It's engaging, fun, and often quite informative. This eight module course will bring you through the whole world of Irish whiskey. Author Fanon O'Connor will take you through the history of the spirit of Ireland, whereas I'll take you through the production processes and modern innovations. All of your learning will culminate in arguably one of the most important parts of Irish whiskey, sensory analysis, or as I like to call it, a good old fashioned whiskey tasting. I'll take you through each of the four major styles of Irish whiskey, helping you pull out the notes from each one. The online format of this course is fantastic. It allows you to learn in your own time, in your own home, and the interactive quizzes in each section lets you monitor your progress as you go. So whether you're just starting your journey of Irish whiskey or you've been with us for a while, this course is perfect for improving your knowledge. So what are you waiting for? Let's get involved. What do you think of that? There we go. No, again, um, there's lots of people interested in Irish whiskey, so... Th that's, um, like, that's like an Irish Irish whiskey course because it's in Scotland. Aye, of course, uh, but and I don't. I don't do that course then because I wouldn't be able to play the full then in this show. I know, <laughs> uh, or in real life, just <laughs> mm -hmm. no. So, if you want, if anybody's interested in that kind of thing, the other thing is, if you're looking at birthday present or um, such and such, it's it's a good thing to give as a gift. And I see Vic has said it's a great course, and he's been fortunate enough to have read it. So. If it's getting his uh, seal of approval, it's good enough for everybody else. I think a lot of people will be looking to do that to get away from their family, maybe for a day or two. Because uh, if they're allowed to travel inside Britain and Ireland, they might go there for a little break this year. That's a that's a good idea for an Easter present for a bloke if he doesn't like chocolate. Hint. Or, or a lady, Justin. Or, or a lady. Or, or a lady. And no. If you don't like chocolate, hint. <laughs> <laughs> now, the New York New York based whiskey blender Fistful of Bourbon is looking for someone to front an advertising campaign. Okay, 
Hold on, this sounds like a spaghetti whiskey. Yeah, they're looking for a spokes fest, right? And they're prepared to pay somebody $100,000 a year for their services. Now, if you go to www.spokesfest.com, you can check out the details. Now, the basic requirements are you must be 25 and over. You have to be allowed to work in America or the US, whatever you want to put it. Uh, and the submissions have to be in by April the 13th. Now, the qualifications for the job are you have to have one hell of a fist, the ability to clinch on cue, a steady hand, and be creative and outgoing. Now, if you go to the website, there's lots of little funny spaghetti western styled clips. Uh, now, Fistful of Bourbon's owned by Grants, whose parent company, the parent company of, of Tullamore Jew. But you could go on, and what they want is they want um, photos of your fist in different positions. Right, so if you <laughs> they just they just and you could get paid for fasting. You 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 get paid. You'll be getting a second <laughs> again. Be very careful. Right, I I <laughs> you could be working with one hand, Justin, and getting paid, getting paid for it. You know, you wow. clench your clench your <laughs> clench your fist, and the money could throw them in. So no, anybody over in the states that uh, thinks they've got a nice fist is able to clench. <laughs> Able to clench that well, it might be the job for you. Listen, in 20 years' time, two young bucks will be doing a holographic video show about this, and they will be doing this as a, as a very inappropriate poster, the way we did the very inappropriate posters about six months ago. Uh, that, that's that, that's just that's just madness, you know. Search yeah. for search for a fist. There you I go. thought it was quite funny whenever I read it, uh, but if you go onto the website, the website's actually pretty cool. It's all spaghetti western style stuff with boy, boys walking up with the guns, and then they pull it out, and start putting sun cream on. <laughs> you know, it's warm the day. It's all it's good fun. They're good. Okay. It's to total madness. I don't know how they come up with them. Uh, obviously, they have focus groups and they come up with them. Or maybe they have little girls with clipboards, I think, maybe. Yeah. 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 Tick, tick, tick. No, but honestly, uh, they are they are funny. They are good. They are good, indeed. Yes. Now, now at, the, at the start of the week, I read this news report, and it's, it's about, obviously, it was for last week. And it's about, it's, it's, it was in the... Canadian online news site Aurelia Matters. I'm not 100% sure. It's in the Blue Hills somewhere in Canada. Yeah. And it reported of an English lady living in Canada who celebrated St. Paddy's Day. Her, she's 103. And she well. celebrated St. Paddy's Day. And the news report said on St. Patrick's Day, Elsie Kelly enjoyed a shot of Jameson whiskey with her daughter. Like, can you show the wee photo of her and her daughter? There they are. Yes, yeah, a, a lovely, a lovely picture. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. mantelpiece. We have a fireplace like our, our had in the other house. Mm -hmm. Let me see. And right. that, that's a bottle of Bushmills. Have you seen? <laughs> yes. Flag it up there, Justin. Yeah, it's on. Yeah, yeah. There's another photo, Justin. Oh, there is. Yeah. Yes. So it's, it's definitely Bushmills, Murray. Yeah. So she, she's on the black bush, not the Jameson. Um, so yeah, so she uh, she obviously she obviously has uh, good taste either way, but I thought it was quite funny whenever they just said, Oh, she's on the Jameson, <laughs> no, she's on the Black Bush, but she's 103 celebrating St. Paddy's Day. In the newspaper report, it said, She says, My family were trying to get me tipsy, but I decided against it. <laughs> but she's a healthy poor there in that glass. Yeah, but but how how could they make a mistake of what what she's drinking? I mean, it's a different picture. But anyway, for some weird. It was like, but some, congratulations on Elsie being one hundred and three. Good. Some girl. weird pictures coming out of the states. We had that Guinness for St Patrick's Day that looked like a Coke float, didn't we? It didn't look like a Coke float. It was a Coke float. Yeah. <laughs> so. Mark Kirsten, good taste that lady. And, yeah, and, you do and like Frank, a blackbush. And Frank Hearn is saying that he went to get a few cans of Guinness Surger today. I tried to get it tonight. And I Never couldn't get it. I'm just having a wee uh, ginger ale and uh, lime with a drop of whiskey tonight. And I couldn't get that Guinness Surger. I've seen it. Uh, but he was trying McGee's off license and cross gar. Spent half an hour there. Darcy, Silky and Bushmills Malaga cast were a few of their offerings. Plus, plus a young lady who, who was well versed in her stock. Uh, and he says he's going to have to return. 
There you go. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Good yeah. stuff. Mate. Malaga Casper smells hanging about. These days, these these normally disappear, you know. But uh, they, do, they do indeed. Yeah. Now, uh, the last of our stories uh, are, are good friends over at the Irish Whiskey Auctions. Anthony, who was on here a few weeks ago, and I think everybody was just absolutely charmed by him. Mm-hmm. They had their busiest ever auction last Sunday night. Uh, well, finished last Sunday night. Uh, 1,388 items being sold. And they weren't all Middleton 2020s. Uh, now, there was furious bidding. And towards the end, it, uh, it started to go a bit funny. Now, I'll just... Put it out there. I had a little bit of a vested interest, and I was looking at it. I was sort of bidding on a couple of bottles and looking at some other stuff. Everybody does this with auctions. You know, you've about seven pages open looking at different stuff to see what's happening. Okay, yeah. Now, I was watching the auctions, and the timing started going a bit funny. I bid on a few things, and the next thing, the time just jumped. So it, there was like two hours added on. And it was a bit confusing, but an email came out by Anthony saying that they decided to add two hours on to the auction because the software just wasn't capable of handling all the amount of bids and everything that was coming in. Now, I, I, he, I actually seen that at the time, and I thought, yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah. that sort of thing happens. Yeah, you, you can withdraw uh, things from auctions at the last minute. If it doesn't get yeah. its bid, you can, there can be a fault with it. It can be broken. Yeah, it's, it's if, online as well. You've got the distance span. And that's but like this, yeah. if you're Christie's, Sotheby's, eBay, oh, things happen. Software goes wrong. Tonight, I'm trying to log. I try to set this up. I try to come on here. And just the computer decided to do a set of updates that, that whenever I saw 15 minutes worth of remaining and there's only 10, it's 10 to 10 but these things happen the BBC is a multi-billion pound company, a multi-billion pound industry and stuff happens all the time don't don't, don't get me started do you remember <laughs> that night Hugh Edwards sat there for minutes and it just went and he didn't speak do you know why I actually thought it was thermonuclear war because that's not so much fun <laughs> down from upstairs and say, "Would you speak?" Or, or the phone ring. But they were yeah. talking in his ear, and, and he did, he didn't think he was on, so he didn't speak. I, that was frightening. But it does happen. It happens to anybody. Well, this is what happened. Now, Anthony re- released this video. Now he's very. He's always in online. He's always out there. He's always talking. He's always, you know he's not he's not doesn't shy away from anything. And as he always as he said to us. Their key is they're transparent. You know, he didn't take it lightly that they extended the auction, but there was people trying to bid. They weren't getting bids in. And the software sort of let him down. Now, he released a video clip, and we're going to play a little bit of it. Uh, If you want to find the whole thing, go onto their YouTube page and watch the whole thing. So we'll just play a little bit of this. Brings me to something else. Um, As I say... We we didn't mess up. Me and Katie didn't mess up. The software messed up. And software does mess up from time to time. Um, you know, the biggest companies in the world, Ticketmaster. I mean, everybody tries to buy tickets for the latest concert and Ticketmaster goes down or it takes, you know, 10 minutes for it to spin and for you to lose your place in the queue and all of that sort of stuff. IDL, you know, for the wealth of IDL and Perno Ricard, they got things wrong with uh, the red breast releases. And one of the consequences of me and Katie doing our videos and everybody knowing our names and knowing who we are and knowing what we do is that we put ourselves out there. But we don't put ourselves out there for abuse. And the abuse that we've taken since Sunday night has been exceptional. Now I've spoken a few times about people's mental health and all that sort of stuff. And I have to say... I was genuinely shook on Sunday night and into Monday and, and, and still am. The abuse, the messages, the emails, the threats, it is just not on. And I, I won't accept it. I don't think that's what this is about. This whole whiskey thing isn't about that. Because somebody didn't get a bottle of whiskey doesn't mean that you can abuse people. And you know who you are. 
the people have done it. It's not on. We've had people come back to us and say, look, I sent an email or a message in frustration and apologize. It was a bit out of order. I was frustrated. And you know what? That's all right. I, I, I'll shake that person's hand. I genuinely will. Big enough to say, look, you were, you were mad. I get why you were mad. I, I actually do get why you were mad. I get why you were upset. I get why you were frustrated. But to abuse people and to insult people and threaten people and you know degrade the work that we've done one of the biggest things that annoys me is people questioning our integrity and anybody who's been on this journey with us from the start and there's lots of you out there you know the one thing that we absolutely have is integrity we will not you know doubt that for a second we always make sure that we're upfront honest and transparent we do things you know in everybody's best interest this isn't about making money for Irish whiskey auctions. This is about promoting Irish whiskey to the world. Because the more people that are engaged with my Irish whiskey, the more jobs that are going to come out of it, the more everything that's going to come out of it, the more value your bottles are going to have if there's more people drinking it worldwide. So I won't stand for being abused. I won't stand for Katie. I definitely won't stand for Katie or any of the staff here being abused. So <coughs> any of you guys that rang here or emailed here with threats and real derogatory statements, hang your heads in shame because it's not on. That's not what whiskey's. There you go. Uh, it's not acceptable there. There's a, a lot of uh, positive comments coming in there from uh, people watching the show tonight. And uh, that's it. Put, uh, put sad it like us. You know? Put it like us. If you're that petty minded that because you didn't get the whiskey at a price at an auction for a bottle of whiskey, that you are phoning people up and threatening people and threatening that guy's wife, then the Irish whiskey industry is not a big place. Uh, and piss off, you know, <laughs> really. I, just, uh, I was on the phone with, with Anthony yesterday about, about a matter, um, and he was genuinely upset, genuinely upset about... About not about himself, about the staff, the the people that work for him. People have the right to complain. That I mean, something happens, fair enough, you know, that that's okay. But to phone people up and threaten people over a bottle of whiskey, catch, catch yourselves on. Honestly, we've, honestly, we've, honestly. All, we've all missed out in auctions for all sorts of <laughs> forgotten about them. Pathetic. Computer, computer wouldn't work. Stuff like that does happen. Uh, of course. Now, I ended up, the thing I was bidding on, I ended up, I had to, had to say, uh, I, had to, I had to pay a little bit extra. But one of the things was, the original bid that I was trying to put in, I couldn't get it in. So the people who had to pay more, you were always going to have to pay more, that's the point. Because the people who were trying to bid couldn't get their bids on. So the fact that they extended it for two hours, whiskey auctioneer, one of the real big whiskey uh, auction sites in Scotland, Perthshire. One, they got hacked just before they were doing the perfect collection. And this is, a, this is millions of pounds we're talking about here. Millions of pounds. They got hacked. I got emails. Everybody got emails. All your, how to you change your passwords. Everything had been, uh, had been hacked and taken down. When they're doing a whiskey auction, the whole auction stays live until five minutes has passed without any bids going on the on anything. So if me and you are contesting a, I don't know, a bottle of, of pars, forty pound or fifty pound, if I put in a bid, the entire auction stays live until. So it might not finish to twelve o'clock at night. But I don't see people phoning them up and threatening people on the end of the line. It's well, if, pathetic. If you're, if you're approachable and accessible, and uh, you know that that can happen. I mean, I've had bad things happen to me on the internet before as well. Uh, for posting stuff that was completely innocuous, but there you go. It's, yeah. uh, it's not right, Seamus. It's not, not right. right, and it's not good for whiskey. That's exactly right. Well, put it like this, as, as Anthony says, you know, so these people know who they are that phoned up and abused them. I mean, it's just pathetic. Pathetic. But anyway, moving on. We'll, we'll move on. Lighter notes. So, we're going to play. We caught up with Deirdre O'Carroll uh, during the week. Uh, well, in the, the, the video I do an introduction and uh, I was really happy to get this because I think she's one of those sort of bright lights 
in, in Irish whiskey. She, she, she's, you know, whenever you meet people and you kind of know that they're they're clued in, they've got a certain je ne sais quoi about them. And, and she does. And I, I was really pleased that we got to have a chat with her. You know, Carol joins us now live from Irish Distillers. She's the blender there. Marty, what a guest we have today. It, it's an absolute pleasure for me to have Deirdre on here again because I met Deirdre when I was doing the Irish Whiskey Academy course. Um, I was just starting out doing stuff in whiskey and I'd sort of done stuff before and I, I went down to Middleton. Um, you're always a little bit apprehensive of these things because when you go in, People are going to come in and then start quizzing you, but you know, you sort of you don't know what they expect. And in walked this young girl who was very intelligent, very, very easy to talk to, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Normally with whiskey, you're expecting some old guy whose grandfather was the cooper and so on and so forth. And it was just a total change from what I was expecting. And she came in and she was chatty and very knowledgeable and it made the whole thing much much better and it's a pleasure to have her here today. Deirdre, thank you very much for joining us. Hi Marty, what an introduction. Um, it's good to see you again a little bit different this time and Justin thanks for having me. I feel like I know you already from looking at all of um, the Instagram lives since October. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Actually, we've just qualified for LinkedIn Live as well, so we'll be plaguing you on another platform. Right? <laughs> on another platform. Great. I look forward to it. This is a big event for Justin. He was telling me all this, all about it. He, he always forgets I'm not that interested. <laughs> to be honest. He gets very excited. I'm not that bothered. I'm much more excited than whiskey. Now, for anyone who doesn't know or hasn't read the news about whiskey news and so on, although we did put it on the show, Deirdre has got a promotion. She's now mm -hmm. a blender down in Middleton, down for Irish Distillers. So, Deirdre, how did it come about? How, what's your background? Tell us your background. So I hold a degree in food science and technology from University College Cork. I also studied with the Institute of Brewing and Distilling and have a diploma in distillation. And I joined the Jemison Engineering Programme in 2012. I worked, got a great foundation about the whiskey making process here. I then became a process technologist. So, so basically what you're saying is, Deirdre, you're as much a scientist as you are an artisan if you're a food technologist. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, so when I was a process technologist, I got, I spent a lot of time with the wider team commissioning um, the pot stills, but also the column stills. And then for the last four years, I've worked predominantly with Kevin O'Gorman on um, in maturation. Um, so myself and a wider team of 61 people, we manage 1.7 million casks so we oversee the filling and um, the emptying of these casks and then yeah um, as you mentioned I am um, newly appointed blender so looking forward to getting uh, stuck into that. 61 people divided by that many million is, is it would take you a lifetime to count them even. I know I know. <laughs> Just and I do it on a smaller scale. I don't bother with the filling, but I empty the bottles. So I'm I'm a, I, I, I'm a, very much an amateur at this. You know, very much a, an amateur. Now, now that you're a blender, what mm -hmm. does what's an ordinary day? What does a blender do for people that wouldn't be from okay with what a blender does, uh, and how do you go about it? So I still have my uh, feet in both camps at the moment. I'm training in Brona, who's replacing me, um, but trying to get as much knowledge from Billy Lighton, the master blender, and Dave McCabe, um, a blender also here in Irish Distillers. But as you can imagine, a lot of the blender's role will be to do with uh, sensory analysis. So from a quality control point of view, um, we are nosing casks. Um, so any of the new distillates or any of the new cask types, we're seeing how the, the liquid is maturing over the years. Um, but then for production um, sensory analysis would be the brands that we know like Redbreast or um, 
the spot range, we're trying to make them consistent. So we're looking at age profile, cask profile, um, and we're just making sure that the brands that you know and love, we're getting them batch on batch. So a lot of it is to do with stock management. As you as you can see, we have 1.7 million casks. <laughs> um, so your nose will be tired at the end of the day. So I, I assume there's a lot of Excel spreadsheet involved in, on, in the whole process as well. Yeah. <laughs> just, to try, exactly. just to try and manage all of that. Now, yeah. I'm going to pick, I'm going to take a whiskey here. Uh, right. And I'm going to, you talk me through a, a nosing from a blender's perspective, because it's different okay. whenever different when you're doing a whiskey review as a sort of end user. Mm -hmm. But as a blender, it must be a different process. So mm -hmm. I have I don't have Glen Cairn of a Capita glass because I know you all use Capita glasses. Yes, um, yeah. I'm I interested have, to see what you're gonna pick. I'm gonna pick red breast 12 cask strength because oh, lovely. Okay. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I will put in a little drop and handily enough we have some water okay. water yeah i was about to say with cast strength um no the addition I, I, of water. i have to just check to see what that says 57.2 percent okay so mm -hmm. so as a blender i think that's probably a fairly standard measure maybe, maybe mm -hmm. not that short but. so how do i do this now from a blender's perspective from a blender's point of view. So what we'll do is we'll send um, a sample request to one of our trusty colleagues in the warehousing department, and they're going to come with um, the different components that will be brought into um, the likes of Gem or Redbreast 12. Um, so that would be like a, sh a sherry cask, um, uh, a first fill sherry cask with one of our distillates here. and then what we'll do is we'll nose them to make sure that they are consistent and a sherry cast. Typically, we're going to be getting um, nutty notes, uh, really rich sultana mm -hmm. notes. Um, so we're, from a blender's point of view, we're looking at all the different components. And then what we'll do is we'll make up a composite here. Um, so the likes of red breast, we'll make up a composite of the different percentages of the different types of casks and then we'll nose that and often what i do is i do a really slow inhale and because you're often met with notes at the start and then notes at the end um, so for this we're looking for that typical Christmas cake, so you're looking for nuttiness, um, looking for sultanas, raisins, and yep. it's quite fruity from the pot still. Yep, as yep. well. That, that nice little spice for Christmas cake type spice coming off it as mm -hmm. well. It's yeah. Is it, for anyone but, for anyone who doesn't know what a pot still is, because I have to, we get we get plenty of viewers from all across in Canada and America oh, and stuff, okay. and mm -hmm. lots of them don't actually. We keep plugging pot still, but we just have to keep reminding pot stills. Uh, the mash bill is malted and unmalted barley. When the unmalted mm -hmm. barley gives it that little bit of spice, so it's a different. It's a PGA product to Ireland, so. Mm -hmm. And it also gives this creaminess, this mouth coating texture to the whiskey. Yeah. So once you taste it, um, it's almost this mouth puckering, lovely mouth coating texture to the whiskey as well. Yeah. So. Now you've got a, a cask strength in the glass. Um, what do you do now as a blender? So as a blender with exactly that composite sample that I was talking about earlier, it would be cask strength. And what we find when nosing um, a whiskey by adding uh, water, you're bringing down the, the alcohol content. So did you say that was in its, its high 50s? Um, so by bringing down the alcohol content, um, you're allowing the natural aromas, but also water binds to the alcohol, so it opens it up, um, yeah. and the flavor components can often change, which I'm always amazed at. Only the tiniest drop of water will completely open up and change the palate. So I think when you add the water to this particular one, um, I don't have it in front of me, I'm a bit jealous now, um, but it, it makes it a lot more fruity. And what would you take the ABV down to? Um, for, for blending, we typically bring it down to um, 
we cut it half and half. So um, you can just add the same amount of volume of water, but for new distillates coming from from the plant, we would bring it down to 20%. So I'll put in a lot of water into this, but it would be considered a lot of water. So I'll put in, say, four teaspoons, and that'll yes, take it down. Yeah, but, that would be but for, for, for tasting this, you'd be probably bringing it down to its high 40s. Yeah. You know, but for for blending purposes, we're bringing it a tiny bit lower to see if there's anything that we don't want. So, you, so once you start put, putting in the water, you're really looking for off notes rather than. Are you looking for off notes rather than the constituent parts of what would be going in the bottle? Is, is that what I'm uh, correct? We're looking for anything, yeah, that undesirable. Um, but also for the likes of red rest, where we're trying to keep it consistent. So what might be desirable in another whiskey, we're trying to keep it very consistent with what Redbreast 12 is for the consumers. Yeah. So do you have a score sheet? Do you, you know, do you have tick, tick, tick? Uh, this is this, this. Is it predetermined or do you, you know, what way does that work? Do you write down how many different flavours you, do you get from a nosing as a blender? Um, so as I said, we're looking at it. Um, we're looking at it in the composite, in the constituents. Um, so all the different ingredients, we've separated them out in the different cast types, and we're nosing these casts singularly. So it depends on what. If we're looking at um, an ex bourbon barrel that will go into red breast, or if if we're looking at a sherry, we're looking at them individually, and then at the end we're we're making sure you're comparing it to um, a red breast cast strength that you'd have as a sample. As a sample. Mm -hmm. Now, I've done the nosing. I've no off notes because I'm actually just about to taste this. This is the, this is where I'm going with this. <laughs> so. Now, you feel a bit hard done by Justin that we don't have. Um... He does this all the time to me. <laughs> he, he, does this, he gets he gets sent the samples and I don't get sent any. And I'm sitting here going, what, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? He, he does this every week, nearly. I'll it's, just it's... I'll just say I bought all of this. By the way, Justin, I didn't get sent any of this. Now, now I've done the nosing. Mm -hmm. now, now, now do I taste? Now, now can we take a taste? Of course, yeah, okay. we wouldn't deny you that. Mm. <laughs> that is wonderful now. Yeah, it's really, it's really good. Yeah, now, it really reminds me of um, of of Christmas. I, I I suppose it's it's my dad's favorite. So I I dare not go home at Christmas <laughs> with without a bottle of it. I can't imagine. I can imagine you got requests for lots of this. Oh, yes. you, tell me this. Could any chance you could get me a bottle of X, Y, and Z? You know. Yeah. So now you've tasted it. Mm -hmm. Again, is it the same process? Is it the same? You're taking checking the for off notes, maybe more than than what you're expecting. You know, what way does that work? Yeah. Again, so you're 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 checking for off notes. You're checking and. Um, again, it's just coming back to the flavor components that you expect out of a red breast, you know, 12 year old. And as you can imagine, we're using natural products. We're using casks, you know, that that vary, you know, from year to from year to year, from different wood types. <laughs> so you're making sure that the, the product is consistent and then the correct percentages of those. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's it's a combination of you're looking for off notes, but it's a you're also just trying to keep it consistent. So yeah. with the red breast that we know and love. Yeah. So once you have your data, once you have your your the, the data that you expect everything to be and checked it for off notes and done that, then you take it under an Excel, I assume, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. your, you'll go for your cask, you'll go for tick tick tick. That's that's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Do you give it? Do you give it a score? Do you do you mark down? Is there what way do you do it for that? Uh, no? You you we don't give it a score. It's it's just it's 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 good. It's it's consistent and it's it's ready to to be bottled. Um. So then, when it comes in 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 its recipe, let's say, um, to where it's being um disgorged or or dumped as we call it, we have our whole <laughs> our own. <laughs> Um, we we bring it to the warehouse and then it goes through um, 
So as a blender, we'll pass it, but then it will go through into a big vat. And there again, we have a sensory panel on site. And what they'll do is they'll nose it again for off notes. Um, so it's nosed twice when it's put into a vat and, and mixed all together. Um, and then afterwards, uh, before it's put into a tanker to to go to water for it to be bottled, it's actually nosed three additional times from our tasting panel, um, just to make sure that nothing was picked up during mm -hmm. the process. Have you actually ever blended something and then had to pour the whole thing down the drain? Does that <laughs> happen? Find it happen? Uh, it's it. No, it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> thankfully, <laughs> I okay. think. Um, I think with our noses and the noses that have gone before us, we have um, we have noted uh, it before it gets to that stage. Yeah. Thankfully, and you can you can often reject a cask um, prior to getting to that point. You know, yeah. um, I think one of our biggest things is because um, Irish whiskey. If let's say if we have a four year old whiskey um, or a component um, and you have to make sure not to add that component to an age statement product like like Redbreast or um, because that's 12 year old, it automatically becomes yeah. three years old. Um, so you have to be very <laughs> careful when you're, yeah. you know, you'd want to have your coffee that morning when you're <laughs> doing blending. Yeah. Just make sure. Now, mm -hmm. now Irish distillers have a, a vast range of products, okay, and getting bigger by the day. There's a new mm -hmm. Method of Madness launched this morning. Mm -hmm. um, now, what would, what's your personal favourite? What's your what, what 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 one would you what do you reach for? What if, do I reach? That's yeah. that's a good. I, I knew you were going to uh, to ask me this question, um, and I'm sure you have asked me this question before <laughs> when we met back in 2016. Um, it it genuinely depends on the occasion. For me, as I as I already mentioned, you know, a, a red breast 12 cast strength at Christmas. Um, although my dad has started to push for getting um, a red breast 27 year old next Christmas. Um, so his palate has, <laughs> has changed. Um, his taste has become more expensive is what you mean. <laughs> his taste has become more expensive, exactly. Um, but I I suppose St. Patrick's Day, um, I opened um, a, a yellow spot 12 year old. Um, I reach for that. I don't know whether it was because it was the first St. Patrick's Day that I can remember that was sunny. Um, and it reminded me of, of the Malaga cast that we use in it. Maybe I thought I was in Malaga, but <laughs> it really depends on the yeah. occasion. Yeah. Like a, a, fr a Friday afternoon, after a week's work, you know, I, I love a Jemison black barrel or I might do a, a Jemison black barrel sour. It, it really yeah. depends on the occasion. I tell I tell people this as well. Um, that, I mean, this red breast is it's a nighttime whiskey. It's a, it's mm -hmm. a sort of autumnal nighttime. You're sitting at home with the fire. With you the know, fire. That's kind of what this is for. Mm -hmm. I, I think yellow spot is the best of the spot range, if I'm honest. I think it's... I think mm -hmm. it's the best by by a margin uh is, is how i would consider it so i'm glad you i'm glad you said glad to hear you saying that but it is it's all, all subjective now david mentioned i mentioned earlier on about the whiskey of carrot i have my certificate here I've, I've, Your certificate? I've my certificate and actually the the academy blend i don't have any certificate or any or any gift bottle because i know nothing about whiskey i'm the person that marty uses as a foil to teach people about whiskey here <laughs> i try and you'll try have to come down to us to the academy justin that yeah. would break the pre entire premise of the show <laughs> then if i actually had been on a training course yeah <laughs> I, I keep trying to tell just certain things about the whole stuff <laughs> and it mm. falls on deaf ears much mm. the same as whenever he gets all excited about oh you've got we've got an extra two listeners in in zimbabwe this week <laughs> i don't care anyway <laughs> but I, I i went down to the uh, academy and it's mm -hmm. it's a wonderful experience because you get to chat to a professional someone who's actually in the tree someone who's there in the business and you get to Really see behind the scenes and get to go to places that you just wouldn't get to on a on a generic mm -hmm. tour, and get to, to someone like yourself who 
as a professional. Now, do you still teach at the academy? Is that still going to be something you're doing? No, as I mentioned, um, I that was something that I was supporting in in my process technologist role. So it's it's Tommy Byrne now who is um, a tutor in the academy, um, but. I during the summer we actually did a virtual academy myself and my my team um which is which is great to yeah. have that opportunity yeah now I, I mentioned that there was a new bottling of uh method of madness come out this morning mm -hmm. now, for anyone who's not sure method of madness is from the micro distillery down in Middleton mm -hmm. and it's the experimental ones now, this one's the French chestnut um mm -hmm. This morning it was mulberry cask. Now, do you care to elaborate a bit on that? Oh yeah, uh, I can't wait to elaborate on it. I, I must get off and try and get it after this podcast. I must get off and try and get a bottle. Um, I was only nosing it last night. It's um, it's so interesting. I can't. I, I don't think I've ever tasted a, a whiskey like it. Um, there's to the nose. It's um, this really strong um, paprika, um, I've read uh, this. smoked paprika, which is really interesting, and it's just um, juxtapositions really nicely with the with the sweetness. But I, I don't know if you're familiar with the mulberry tree; they're quite small, so the the casks um, are only fifty liters. Yeah. Um, so they're they're teeny tiny. Not use, not we're not used to working with something no. so so small on a big scale, but. Yeah, I think there was a lot of trial and error um, with uh, Finbar and Anna and the team um, who sourced them from from Hungary. But it's a really, really interesting um, whiskey. You must try and get your hands on it. I don't know. Well, I've already got a gonna... bottle. Oh, did you? I yeah, managed to get they're one. not sold I... out by the time I I try and get a bottle later. I, I think they I think they probably are. But it's all right. Justin got a bottle as well. I managed to say oh, just... likely Justin. Don't you, be giving, don't you be giving the game away, Marty? Don't you be giving the game away at all? There's my bottle there. It's a virtual <laughs> one. <laughs> no, I, I told Justin, let's get yourself a bottle of this because it'll be it's, it's interesting. Because this is an area of Irish whiskey that's totally different from Scotch because mm -hmm. in Scotland it has to be 100% oak, whereas mm -hmm. over here we can experiment with different casts. So we have mm -hmm. French chestnut with mulberry, acacia wood. Um, is there... I know you. I know you can't tell us, but is there other woods possibly being explored? Yes. <laughs> that's okay. That's about, that's about as good as you can answer. <laughs> that's about as good as I can answer if I want to keep my job. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't, do um, what, don't don't do what another uh, another distiller did. They had the bottle sitting on the shelf behind us oh, in the in right. the picture. But luckily, um, they, they when they lifted it, when I pointed it out, was that bottle? They turned it around. And we couldn't get it they and turned it around. It. Okay, jeepers! I better have a look behind me see if there's anything hiding. I, I don't think that would be um, your fault. But yes, we're we're constantly experimenting. Yeah, so we have a micro distillery here, Marty. You would have um, seen it when you were down last. Um, and since then, um, our distiller Larissa has been very busy. It's a centre dedicated for learning. Obviously, all of our graduates would learn how to distill here. And Larissa then would um, has been experimenting with distillates such as oats and rye. Um, typically, with pot stills in Irish distillers, we would have used um, a mash bill of a, a a pot still whiskey which is malted and unmalted barley um so yeah it's i'm really interested to see how these new distillates uh, that come out of the micro distillery um marry or, or mature in different types of casts that we have here uh, the uh the the, the cask selection I assume these days there's so many different experimental casks. Everybody's chasing around for different cask finishes, different wood styles. So this, all these different little parts, mm -hmm. you know, the different mash bills, the different cask finishes, the, the, the different cask selections and so on. I mean, it must be, even for a company the size of, of Irish Distillers, it must mm -hmm. be really, really exciting with everything that's happening all across the distilleries in Ireland. Oh, completely. It's such 
an exciting time to be a part of yes Irish distillers but in in distilling in general it's um as you mentioned we it's it's just a time to get creative with all these different cast types um with new distillation you know with new distillates and it, it's Surely great to see everything's been tried now in whiskey this, yeah. in the past 300 years what hasn't been done that you're going to do um, I can't, <laughs> I can't answer that, Justin. With the <laughs> with the lights, that's a secret. Um, right. I'm looking forward to getting very creative. I, you know, it, myself and the blending team, and working again with the micro distillery, and um, I think it's very exciting that there is um, a trend for premiumization. So people are are, are drinking less, but they're drinking better quality and, and different types of 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 products. So it, it's it's a very exciting time to be a part of the industry, I think. Now this was released was it two weeks ago? From the red breast ten year old, yes. Red yeah. breast ten year old cast friend. Now I've noticed uh it says exclusive. Mm -hmm. It says limited edition, mm -hmm. cask strength, batch one. Now, they're going for the collector's market a bit here now, let's be fair. Because mm -hmm. this is this is a very box-ticking exercise for the collector's market. Now, it's come out, it's obviously got the new branding and new imagery on it. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm honest, I I would prefer the 12-year-old. I thought the 12, I think the 12 is better than the 10, but that's just personal preference. Mm -hmm. Now, on the back, on the back, it says to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the rebirth of Red Breast because it disappeared for a while and then uh, Irish Stillers took it up again. Master mm -hmm. Blender Billy Layton and Blender Dave McCabe. Now, I want to see Deirdre O'Carroll's name on one of these, some one of these days soon. That's what we're looking for. We want one of these. That's what we're looking for. Yeah. Now, if you had to, if you had to pick something that you would like to try or like to see or like to do yourself what would be something that you would like to do um it's you know i have loads of ideas i i suppose i i love i love just working primarily with um with the micro distillery so trying new distillates in you know we're we're trying some of our um traditional style of whiskies in in different wood types um but i'm really looking forward to seeing what comes out of the micro distillery in in different wood types and seeing how they progress as well yeah and I, 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 i'd love to see it now i want to show justin this is middleton very rare okay and this is a really really rare bottle of this a really rare bottle of it because it's opened mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> these are now going for really really high price now i mean mm -hmm. the, the secondary market on these has just went crazy in the last little while mm -hmm. uh now i know i know the producers don't look to the secondary market but you can't ignore that and whenever you've got the the, the exclusive the birdhouse exclusive the limited edition printed in the box there's obviously that element to everything too mm -hmm. so with the new experimentation and the new interest in collecting whiskies Mm -hmm. His interest's never really been as high, or certainly not for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. uh, so, do you do you have a collection of whiskies at home? Do you get into that? Because you must have access to some nice collectibles. Uh, I do, um, and <laughs> I would say it's only in in the last year that I've started getting into collecting. But what I, I tend to do is I tend to buy one to keep and um and and one to one to taste oh, yeah. um you know just to it's it's important to open these bottles and have and have a taste um i would love to open them but marty keeps on telling me to buy them and sit on them for 10 years I've got to wait <laughs> you only buy one for 10 years 10 years you only buy one and there's always i always have some if you want to taste them justin there's always ways of getting you a taste of them don't worry about yeah. that we'll get you sorted because mm -hmm. the bottle of shares and all the new groups and stuff i i'm actually a fan of this and i don't know what sort of process that's really actually i was pleasantly surprised by that mm -hmm. i thought it was i thought it was an awful lot it punches well above what i expected it to be if i'm honest yeah. um i really really like that it's really uh, yeah the jameson cold brew mm -hmm. the jameson cold brew now 
I'm really looking forward to the day that your name's on one of these bottles because I can I can see it coming. I can I I, I think the likes of yourself with um, with new sort of vision and new eyes, and you're moving from the sort of science area into the blending's more of an art. You know, we, we sort of see it as more of an art than than, mm -hmm. than science, and you're moving across that in that with these with new ideas and new eyes, and I'm really looking mm -hmm. forward to that. Uh, what coming in the future? But I will have to just bring up a point. When I was down at Middleton and we were doing the course, you get a little bus. Bus takes you up into the, the warehouses and you're you're like this walk, and then just these thousands of barrels of whiskey and the smell, and the, you get to taste the port pipes and stuff. It's amazing. But on the way back. There was bunny rabbits running about, and Deirdre, oh look, bunny rabbits! She got very, very excited by this. Uh -huh. I told her that very near where I live, you have these. These are golden hairs, and they're they're golden. When you see them in the sun, they shine, and they've got bright blue eyes. So yes. I, I thought I was, I thought I would show her a picture. These are on Rathen Island, which is just round the corner from me. It's obviously an mm -hmm. island, so it's a, just round the corner and a bit of a boat ride. <laughs> But these are let's pull up full screen there for us, Justin. All right, oh. I'll, I'll pull the best oh, picture. The of blue them. eyes, yeah, the bright blue eyes. Look at that there, yeah. So I did. Uh, thank you for sharing with me. I did. You know, I, I, I do believe you, Marty. But I did think that they could have been photoshopped when I googled them. So I'm, as I'm a scientist, I have to see everything with my own eyes to to believe it. Yeah, that's that's especially because. Have you a, seen one, Justin? I actually have. I actually did the interview about 20 years ago about the March hares, and it really is a thing that they come out in March yeah. to fight, uh, and that's why they're associated with the March and the okay. Easter and stuff like that. There are a lot of funny rabbits have taken over. They're beautiful. They're, they're, they they're are rabbits. beautiful. They're massive. They're absolutely mm -hmm. massive they're, things. They're massive They'll things, have to but... come up next March, so that's the best time to, to see them. Yeah, You're always more than welcome. Deirdre, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Um, I wish you every success. I, Thank you. I, well deserved. I think you're a fabulous girl. You're really, really knowledgeable, intelligent, clever in what you do. And I wish you every success. And hopefully we'll speak to you again soon. Hopefully. Thank you. It's a lovely way to, to spend a Thursday afternoon. <laughs> All right. Thank you very yeah. much. Take care. Bon Bye. 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 Hello, we're back in the room. I thought we, had, I thought you forgot about fifty p in the meter there. I thought we were cut off. No, 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 we haven't been cut off. It's just the delay. Everything coming back into sync after that finishes. Now, uh, what a show that was! I, I actually remembered the name of the guy that I interviewed about the March hers in Ireland, Dermot May. There it is, Dermot May. He's actually dead. He was ninety when he died a few years ago. Dermot May from the Times. There you go. No, the, 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 if you ever, if you ever get a chance to go to Rathen and see the the, the golden hairs, they're very hard to see. They're, 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 you'll, you'll get them in pictures, but they're they're really nice. But what a girl! Um, you know, one of those people when you you, you first meet somebody and you, you get chatting to them, and you know they're smart, you know they're articulate, you know that they're that they're clued in. You just sort of know. And then when I saw that she'd got a promotion, I thought she, she's the sort of Exactly what Irish whiskey will be like moving forward. So yeah, um, I, 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 thanks very much for doing it there. I, I, I really appreciate it. Look what I have, Justin. Did yours Bold arrive over. in the post? Did it? Mine arrived. I know we we said earlier on that Irish distillers messed up the red breast, uh, the dream cask stuff. <clears throat> they didn't mess up with this. I ordered. <laughs> I ordered it. And it was. I ordered it. Uh, 12 o'clock or whatever it was whenever it, it came online and it was here about nine o'clock the next morning so well done irish distillers oh, that, now, was, that was quick now i'm going to do something that you'll not see very often justin are you going to open that in front of me i'm going to i'm going to open this now i, I don't necessarily i don't like doing this if i'm honest because it, it, listen folks what do you think he is do you think i mean he's good some, some somebody was saying they were enjoying their dapper blend tonight I, I would like to enjoy some of that tonight too that's good, that's oh, I, good. I thoroughly enjoyed that i was gonna say do you think i was born under a mulberry bush <laughs> i don't know where you were i think you were created in some sort of chemical lab somewhere <laughs> but, uh, so i saw someone asked about uh, the the red breast 10 
Um, I've I've already recorded a review of this. Okay. So it'll be going up uh, later on in the in the week. Uh, I I got sort of mildly criticised uh, because I didn't mention that my uh, Dunville's the eighteen oh eight review didn't mention that they actually had some of their their own pot still on it, original stuff in it. But, yeah, I, but I didn't know. I didn't know, and I know, I didn't know because they didn't actually reveal that. They don't state it on the bottle, so right. so I wasn't going to know. But uh, if you want to check out my review of the Dunville's 1808, it's on YouTube. Oh, oh by Tell the me. way, you're actually getting criticised by Frank Hearn. He says, the hers don't fight, they box. Marcus of Queenbridge, Ruby Rose, and all that. Here, hang on. I never mentioned the hair, mad, the hair fine. You mentioned it. Oh, yes. So you're getting criticised, Justin. So I did, Not Frank. Me. You've been banned from the site. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Justin, Justin's got authority. Justin's in power. I know. But, <laughs> no. Uh, when, I, 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 when Billy Layton sells all his collection of Middletons and uh, is able to buy a, a, an island in Tahiti, <laughs> well, you'll, see, you'll see Deirdre heading up that way. And you, you can see, you can see it. I mean, you really could. She, she, she could. In the not too distant future, okay, it'll take a while. But in the not too distant future, you'll see her name on bottles, and it'd be, it'd be lovely to see on a bottle of red breast her name on it. You know. But what's that space? What's that space? This is what Michael Matthews is saying. He says that's a good arrangement. Buy two. Marty drinks one. Justin keeps the other. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. It, uh, <laughs> no, I end up. I buy two. Justin buys. I've, Justin only buys up whenever I'm telling him he buy it. You know that's, that's true. What about that cold brew? Tell us more about that cold brew. William's asking about the cold brew. Needs ice. The cold that cold brew. It's it's whiskey and coffee, so it's thirty percent. Yeah, it's thirty percent ABV. Um, and I'll be honest with you. Uh, Is it like Sheridan's? What's it like? It's it's not really like any of the rest of them because it's just a natural cold brew coffee. So it's. You automatically think when you, you think of something like this that it's going to be like Bailey's or, you know, like a coffee liqueur type stuff. And okay, okay it, that's what it is. But it's it works really well because the, the coffee comes through on it with the, the, the whiskey lifting it a bit. Uh, and it really works. Now, um, William's saying about putting it on ice. Yeah. Yeah. You, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Get yourself a bottle of it because it's not that deep. It's like twenty quid or something. So it's. I like the fact that it's actually quite high in in whiskey at thirty percent, um, because it gives a nice kick. You know. Now, I'm going to nose the Mulberry cask. Uh, I'm not going to give a huge review on this because you can't review something just when you open it. You have to have a, a couple of them, but. It's, it's it's really quite it's quite sweet coming on in the nose. There's definitely there's definitely a smoky element to it, and I wouldn't necessarily say it it's paprika at this point, but there's a there's a peppery element. So maybe if it you know you try it, it's opened a while, let the oxygen add it, and give it a, a run later on. But it's definitely sweet. Well, that's different. <laughs> that is different. Um, there's lots, lots of, there's lots of green elements coming in in this. Um, wine gum, sort of hard, hard, hard gum sweeties. American hard gum sweets. Um, there's a, there's like a Parma violet. You know that. Um, it's it's very sweet. If I'm on sort of ca candy confectionery type stuff, yeah, we'll, we'll have to sit with this and then do a review of it during the week. Is that sold out, Marty? Is it that one? There was a thousand bottles of it released, and like everything else in Irish whiskey these days, it's just boom, bought up straight away. Uh, Irish. 
Irish whiskey, the, 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 the demand for Irish whiskey now has just went absolutely through the roof. Uh, people are collecting them. Once people start collecting them, prices just start going crazy. I saw someone earlier on saying that they had bought uh, uh, Gelston's on my review. And I lifted this down. £22 a bottle off the website. £22 a bottle. Hard to beat that. Now, I saw some guy saying the other day that this was very reasonably priced. This was €100 Euro for a 10-year-old whiskey. Okay, it's cask strength and all that. If you went to Scotland and said to someone a, a, a 10-year-old whiskey is £100, okay, well, slight different. Okay, it's cask strength. They would look at you as if your head was cut, but that I don't blame them for a second. Right? They sent it out, sold out in, a, in no time at all. Um, good on them. But to say a hundred euro, what's that? Eighty-five pounds, something like that. Yeah. Um, for a ten-year-old whiskey, is is good value for money. Um, I would, I would, I would beg to differ on that. Twenty-two pound for a pot still whiskey. This is, uh, this has very, 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 very good value for money, and it's an introduction to pot still for people that might not have tried it before, and they can. Access pot style whiskey at a very, very reasonable price. Really impressed by that. Really impressed by it. Um, and I hope everybody else is as well. Okay. Yes. Good, 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 good. Uh, great stuff. Well, uh, we have another great show coming up on Wednesday. We're going to cover the top five whiskeys in the podcast, aren't we? No. I have to just remember this, Justin. You asked me what's the 10 whiskies. If you were starting a bar or a, that's got a nice leak out of a sort of peppermint thing coming through on it there. Anyway, sorry, distract it. No, um, you asked me if you were starting a bar or a collection, 10 Irish whiskies you have to have. So there's a few criteria. I thought about this. You have to have, uh, you have to have accessibility so it can't be a single cask stuff okay it has, yeah. it has to be uh, a reason for it being in a collection so i can't mm. just pick oh you have to have bushmills 21 and you have to have bushmills right, 16 right. no nope, yeah so there has to be a variety and it has to cover lots of bases I'm actually struggling with the second half of this. The first well, half is surprised. available. Just one of your whiskies wasn't even a whiskey. It was Kilo and Pudgy. I know, I know. But <laughs> when you listen to the podcast, you'll understand what, why, why it's there. So, yeah. All you have to do is ask your smart speaker to pay, play Irish Whiskey Review Podcast. It'll kick in. If you want to support us, it's buymeacoffee.com slash Irish Whiskey. Well, what a night that was tonight, Marty. Yeah, it was. And... Uh, don't forget, this is, was Deirdre's first interview, and I, I think she did fantastic. And I, I, I know she was a little bit nervous, and we had a couple of wee tech issues as well. Um, but these things happen. Um, yeah, but watch that space because she, I mean, she she is she's she's going places. She really is. Good indeed. All right. Good night, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for taking part. All the best. Uh, catch you same time next week on Facebook and on YouTube Live. And don't forget, you can catch up with us again on Instagram and also now on LinkedIn Live as well. Good night.